Everyone say hello to our new arrivals, Marlon and Dory. Hello, Marlon and Dory. This meeting is now in order. Now we will say our pledge. I am a nice shark, not a mindless eating machine. If I were to change this image, I must first change myself. Fish are friends, not food. Except thinking dolphins. Yeah, they think they're so cute. Oh, look at me, I'm a little dolphin with my little flippers. Today is step five, bring a fish friend. Did you all bring your fish friends? Come on. Oh, I seem to have misplaced my friend. That's all right, you can have one of mine. Now it's time for testimonies. Who wants to go first? Big me, big me, big me! Oh. Alright, what about the Sheila down front? Hi, I'm Dory. I don't think I've ever eaten a fish. That's an inspiration! That's great! That's great! Oh, I think I nicked myself. Let's go. Intervention! Yeah. We're having fish tonight! Uh. <laughs> Alright guys, so we just killed the sharks, obviously. Um, so we're gonna go over some of the shark musculature uh, right now for you guys to study on. I'm gonna try and get everything that you need to know for this exam. All right, so we're gonna start with the dorsal longitudinal bundles. These are both portions of the dorsal longitudinal bundles. The dorsal longitudinal bundles themselves are apaxial muscles, meaning that they are above the horizontal septum, okay? So if this is your horizontal septum right here, this physical line separation between bundles, that is your horizontal septum. And above it's the apaxial, below it is hypaxial musculature. So right here, you have lateral longitudinal bundles, ventral longitudinal bundles are of course on the ventral side. Each of them have their own myomers and myoseptus. So if you remember, myomers are the muscles of the shark. So between each myoseptus is a myomer. Myoseptus are the physical separations between each myomer. Okay, and that allows the shark to move like this. So those are your longitudinal bundles, okay? The difference in colors, in case you guys are wondering, has to do with the different proteins. Um, so you don't have to worry too much about that, but if you are ever wondering why they look different, it's because of that. The things that you need to know here is you have the scapular process. If you remember the pectoral girdle skeleton, um, the scapular process comes out below that coracoid bar. All right, here's the cucularis. It's right above the gills. And remember that it levitates the gill arches or opens them up essentially. So here are your gill arches down here. They're, um, they're covered by dorsal and ventral constrictors and that's what's opening and closing the gills. So shark and fish gills will open and close and that is due to those dorsal and ventral constrictors. So these particular ones are the dorsal constrictors. All right, and then you have the intermandibularis down here. And now we're gonna to move to another specimen for some other portions. Okay, so on this shark, you can see the ventral side um, that we're gonna go over. So here are those ventral longitudinal bundles that I was talking about. You can see the separation of the myosepta or the, the myomeres via you know, the myosepta down here as well. Here are your ventral constrictors, like the dorsal constrictors once again, they open and close those gills. Here's the coracomandibularis right here that you need to know. That's right next to these ventral constrictors right here. This up here, starting right here, is that coracoid hyoid that you don't actually need to know, but that's just so you get an idea of where you are. Your nasal capsules are up here, if you remember them on the chondrocranium, right? The chondrocranium is the neurocranium, and a shark gets physically, physically separated from the splanchnocranium that has to do with the gill arches. All right, so your nasal capsules are up here and the skeleton, they were imploded. So full unimploded ones are right here. The Meckel's cartilage is right here, right? And that palato quadrate is the 
cartilage piece that's connecting the Meckel's cartilage to the upper side of the cranium, all right? Here's the adductor mandibuli, or adductor mandibularis, however you want to state that. And then, easy question on an exam, this line that's separating right and left halves of the ventral bundles is the linea alba. Go. Okay, on this shark, we're gonna show you more of a, what you, aerial view of the shark. So here are your bundles back here, right? Here's the dorsal longitudinal bundles again, and the lateral longitudinal bundles. Here are the dorsal constrictors, right? They're right over the gills. Here's the scapular process again, and the cucularis is coming directly over the gill slits, right? Here's your levitator palata quadrati right here. I'm sorry, not levitator palata quadrati. Levitator hyomandibuli, okay? This is your levitator hyomandibuli. Here's that adductor mandibuli again. Here's the spiracle. So the spiracle is the first gill slit of the shark. There are six. That's a really good exam question. And then this brown muscle surrounding it is the spolicularis, okay? Right in front of it, of which you can't see, that's the levitator palata quadrati. The post-orbitalis muscle is below the eye. You can't see it in here, even though the eyes have been completely removed, interestingly. Yeah, that's a little bit disgusting. So the eyes have been completely removed. Uh, one thing I also want to stress is the fin. Okay, here are the pectoral extensors of the shark fin. They are on the dorsal side of the fin. The ventral side of the fin are the pectoral flexors that depress the fin, okay? All right, so this is pretty much all you need to know for the shark. Um, still study your manual, because there might have been a few things I've missed. Now we're gonna do the nectarist in a separate video.